Hey, welcome to this PHP Basics tutorial on forms and form processing. In this video, we're going to talk about those two things. Um, interesting sort of thing. Uh, PHP initially started off uh, when it was called Personal Homepage Tools, not what it is now. Um, I do know uh, it's PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Um, when it was when it was version 1.0, um, pretty much one of the well, pretty much all it did. Uh, one of like the four things it did. Um, was process form data and sort of log it to files at the time anyway. Um, so yeah, we're sort of back to the beginning in that respect. Um, it's also one of the most useful things it can do um, to interact with forms. It's also one of the easiest, so this might be quite a short video. Uh, I'm going to cover the f uh, HTML of a form as well, so if you don't know, oh well, if you do know, then sorry, and if you don't know, then it'll be useful for you and you can learn some new things. So, uh, right, let's get started. Oh, I should just quickly mention this form.php file. I just have it open in my browser here. Uh, at the moment, it does nothing because I've removed that box. And um, we'll be putting it back in a moment. So, yeah, it's a blank file, a HTML template with a title. It's just by itself in this folder. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Um, the way you create a form in HTML is to use a form tag. The, there are two attributes that you need to supply. That is the action, which is the um, it tells the browser where to send the data that you're entering in to, if you like. So this can either be like the name of a script, it can be a full URL, it can be anything. It can also be an empty string, which means the current page. So say if I had form.php that's exactly the same as if I just left it empty, like so. Um, you also need to specify the method as an attribute. That needs to be either get or post, which I will explain the difference between in a few moments. For now, I'm just going to set this to get, like so. End that tag there. And close it off with the closing tag. And then inside the form, we need to specify some inputs. Each of those I'm going to put inside a paragraph tag. Don't have to. Uh, any tag can work. I usually use paragraph. Um, so inside this paragraph tag, we're just going to create a simple text box input. Like you see, like on Google, that's a text input. Um, so yeah, it's gonna, the tag is input. Uh, it needs one attribute, which is type. And we're going to set that to text, like so. Um, the other attribute you need to now give it is the name, which uh, I will explain how that works in a moment as well. So I'm just going to call this for now um, text. No, let's call it text input. Text input. Okay. And to be able to submit the form, we need another attribute, another paragraph tag, uh, and that needs to be a submit button, which is another type of input. Uh, although this time its type is submit. Um, and we're not going to give it a name because we don't need to use the value of the submit button, so we don't want it sent. Um, and we're just going to give it a value. That's the value. Uh, let's say send. So if I go back to our page now and hit reload, you see we get this box that has uh, this button that has send in it. Um, see that corresponds to this, and we have a text box which is created by this and it will all be sent to um, the current URL using the get method. Now what the get method means is that the information will be sent actually in the URL as part of the URL sort of request. As part of, yeah, as part of the request for the file we're going to send some data. So say if I type in test in here and hit send you see we get this question mark text input equals test added to the end of the current URL. Um, you can access this, this is called the query string, you can access this information via PHP using the uh, get array, which I will demonstrate uh, here, inside a div tag, like so. Just open a PHP block. So in here we can do some PHP. Um, what we can do, for example, is print out the entire get array, like so. So get corresponds to the method that we're using. Hit refresh, you see we get this array output. Um, and what, what PHP has done is it's converted this into an array. 
So you've got uh, this becomes the key, and this becomes the value of each element because you can specify more. Like uh, I can add more. Usually the sort of and symbol is the separator, so I can do test equals 45, and then we get as a second element in this array test pointing to 45. So you can have like a uh, fairly well. There is a limit. You can have a a big limit, a big, a large number of data. You can send lots of data through this system. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, for example, I could add another text input. So if I just copy this, oops, and give it a name of text, just text will do. So if I reload our page now, uh, actually no, let's just go remove all this go back to form. You see when the get array is empty, you just get an empty array. Uh, the dollar sign underscore get this variable has the value of an empty array by default and then PHP will populate it with the information that is supplied in the URL. So say if I now tab, type in one wonder, one and two in here and hit enter, you see we get um, in the URL we get text input equals one and text equals two. So um, this is the name of the input that we entered. So see that corresponds to uh, what we entered here, and this uh, value is the value that we typed. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, we should talk about post now, which is the other type of data you can send to PHP. Um, so basically, if I just change this. Uh, the method of this form to post rather than get and resend this data oh well actually I should just remove this a little bit misleading if I reload the page without the get get information there and resend the data uh, you see we get the we don't get any information in the URL anymore we don't get any information in the get array uh, instead we need to use the post array very simple, works in the exact same way. If I now uh, resend this, you see we get the same output as before, uh, but there's no information in the um, URL. Um, the advantage of post are fairly obvious. Uh, it's not displayed in the URL for one, which is good. So it's like passwords, obviously, shouldn't be sent directly in the URL because they're visible. Someone looking over someone's shoulder could uh, do this. Um, that free hosting site, free hostier, or something. Uh, when you register there, you get your password displayed in plain text on in the URL. Not ideal. Um, I remember that from a while ago. They might have changed it actually. Anyway, um, they're probably going to sue me now. Right. Um, back to the tutorial. <laughs> Stay on track. Um, so yeah, this works in the exact same way as um, the get array. So post and get are fairly equivalent. <coughs> Um, so you can use them in either way. Uh, other advantage of the post method is that you can send huge amounts of data, whereas get has a limit. Um, I think post has a limit as well, but it's much, much higher. Uh, like when you send files, they're done via um, post, and you can send files up to like 4 gig, so yeah, a huge limit. Um, what else can I talk about? Request, the request array. Um, similar to get and post, request will um, well demonstrate by example. If I type something in here like test, test, you see we get the same thing in the request array. We it basically okay. Request is a combination of get and post. I think that's probably the best way to explain it. So say if I add some get data here, uh, like we had before, you see we get that here as well. If I now fill in the form. You see, we get both information. Um, okay, well, yeah, this has been overwritten because. Oh, hang on. I didn't even give that. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, that gets overwritten. Uh, oh, we type the same thing in. Anyway, yeah, it's a combination of both arrays. You see, we have text and test here. So we get this new one. This one is from the get, um, get array, and these other two are from the post array. When you have the same information, one of them will take um, priority. So, uh, so if we add, say, one and two, hit enter, you see we get one and two. 
because uh, post takes priority over get. It's just the way it is. Uh, you can probably change the order. In fact, I think you can change the order. So yeah, that's that. Um, I never use request because there doesn't ever seem to be a reason to. It seems kind of pointless, really, because you're only ever using one type of form, either get or post. So yeah. Um, one thing that you can also do is let's just have these both now. Post get first, then post. Actually, let's just quick. Let's just echo a um, line break tag. Sorry. <laughs> um, so if I reload the page now, resend it. You see, we get the get data first. Was it? I forgot. I've just typed. Yeah, we get the get data first, followed by the post data. Uh, where's our browser gone? Here. So this is the get array, and this is the post array. So if I change this to like that, see the post array disappears because we haven't sent it anymore. Um, the get data is still in the URL, so that is still sent and processed by PHP into this array that we can use however we like. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, by I suppose I could just quickly say to output one of these, all you would do is like echo get test, and then we'll just get four, five, eight output like that. So that's how you use them normally. I'm just using this print under r underscore r function to demonstrate the two arrays. Um, one last sort of nice thing: if I remove all this get data from the URL. So we get two empty arrays. Um, you can specify get data in here as well. So say if I set this to form dot php question mark test equals um, I am get like so, and hit reload, and then we must submit the form. So if I do one and two again, you see we get uh, I am test appearing in the array in the test variable. The get array gets populated with test equals I am test and the post array gets populated with the stuff I entered into the form. So this is quite a nice way to um, sort of control a more complicated back-end type system. Like You can choose what the form does if you like by doing changing this get information. Um, one of the quick thing, you don't necessarily need that. You can just have the question mark if you want to keep it small you can also sort of maintain get information uh, like across multiple pages so you could do here instead of test equals something you have you could do php echo get test and that would keep test consistent how many times you submit the form and you know did whatever um, you should really apply html entities to this for xss reasons which i explain in my xss security tutorial so i think that is pretty much all I can say about forms if you want to, oh one last quick thing, if you want to use one for uploading a file um, you have to set another thing called the enc type enc type attribute um, but I cover that in my file upload tutorial so you should go and watch that uh, so yeah that's forms and form processing in PHP um, hopefully this has been pretty useful um, so yeah thanks for watching and Goodbye, I suppose.